serve in the position of Children's Education and Family Ministry Coordinator. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who came among us as a servant, calls us to faith and a life of loving and service to our neighbors. Laura, you come among us as one invited to share this service, a gift from God, and to inspire all of us to love and good works. And so, Laura, in the presence of this assembly, will you commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility in the confidence that it comes from God? If so, please respond, I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. Will you carry out this ministry in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and with the confessions of the Lutheran Church and in harmony with the constitutions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? If so, please respond, I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and faithful in your use of the means of grace and in prayer? If so... Please respond. I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. Trusting in God's care, will you seek to grow in love for those whom you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of Jesus Christ with a godly life? I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. People of God, Laura does not walk in this journey on her own. And so I ask you, will you receive Laura into this ministry as one sent to serve in the church of Jesus Christ? If so, please respond, we will. And we ask God to help and guide us. Will you pray for her and help her honor her work's sake in all things, strive together to live in peace and in the unity of Christ. Again, if so, please respond, we will, and we ask God to help and guide us. Laura, I now declare to you, installed as Children's Education and Family Ministry Coordinator, Almighty God, bless and guide and direct all your days and in your deeds of peace, that you may be a faithful servant of Jesus Christ. Amen. Would the congregation please pray with me? O God of wisdom, in your goodness you provide faithful teachers and leaders for your church. By your Holy Spirit you have called Laura to the ministry of witness and service in leadership and teaching. Give her all and give her and all teachers insight into your word. Help them to lead holy lives as examples to all and give her the courage to know and do the truth in every circumstance. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And so, people of God, with great too many, ah, (laughs) I present to you Laura Morlock in her position of Children's Education and Family Ministry Coordinator. Let us welcome her in the name of God. Thank you. Yes, you can. All right, go ahead and just park it under there. All right, with that, I invite you to please stand as you are able. And we continue with our Thanksgiving at the font. In this season of Epiphany, what are we all about? What are ABCs? Aha, bless or baptism and call. And so our confession is our water prayer from our baptismal service. So that's what we're using as our confession. All right. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who spoke light into creation, who calls us to listen and follow, who sends us to share his light. Amen. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. And so we take a moment of silence to name the power of sin and death that binds us. To 
together we pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that we who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you, O Lord, be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our gathering hymn, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
to center our lives in the water and the word that you nourish our souls with your body and blood let us pray to the lord let us pray to the lord in prayer. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. The reading for this Sunday is, Sunday is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. Years and even months prior to the release of Nelson Mandela from a South African jail, South Africa was heading towards a civil war that seemed inevitable. 
On one side, the white apartheid government was digging in with increased killing attacks on all that opposed it. On the other hand, the ANC, the party of Mandela, was training in exile for complete war. Bombings and killings were happening all around. Total decimation was likely. Botswana itself would be drawn into this. Luckily, there were people on both sides that knew something needed to be done. Preliminary talks were going on quietly beyond public notice. In a touching and revealing scene from a portrayal of one of these discussions aired on the PBS movie do uh, docudrama Endgame Apartheid, two individuals meet informally and one said to the other, you know, the one thing that bothers us the most is that if someone from your side approaches us, we cannot hear you. Our frustration, anger, fear, and hatred would prevent you from us listening to you. We would not be able to hear, we would not be able to hear, we would not be able to hear. The reading. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark was, where God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he, Eli, said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli's, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated, and I invite the children to come forward. Even though it's not listed, come on up. I'd like to visit with you a little bit. Come on up and have a seat. How's it going? Welcome. Good to see you. You look so nice, Miss Addie. Come on, have a seat. So the other day, well, first of all, you guys have been used to seeing Miss Susie up here a lot, haven't you? Yeah, Miss Susie Porter, have a seat, Brielle. And she has been doing just such a wonderful job in this time of transition till we were able to bring on board a children's person. And now Miss Laura is that children's person. And so we're going to see Susie doing different things. And Laura is a face that you are going to see around more often working with you and your families. And so we are so thankful to Miss Susie. Can we just show our thanks and appreciation? <laughs> truly. Truly. And it's still going to take a little while to get Miss Laura up to speed. She's working really hard to get to know everybody's names and, and jump right in. Um, so we're going to see L Susie kind of handing off the torch, so to speak, to Miss Laura. But we're going to be hearing from Miss Laura more often. She's going to be talking with you guys during this time. So the other day, um, I saw Miss Susie eating a sucker. She was eating a sucker. And I said, I asked, hey, Miss Susie, is that sucker good? And she said, well, here, why don't you try one? So, yeah, I'm not really mechanically inclined. This could take a while. So I opened it. I was eating it. And then I said, I said, wow, you're right. That was really, really good. And I'm glad that she gave me one so that I could try it out for myself. So I was wondering, Miss Laura, what do you think of this sucker? Do you think it's pretty good? Yeah. Yeah, you can try one for yourself. You go ahead and you try that and you see it. Mmm. really good. Try it. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you guys, I'm wondering, have you guys ever had something that's been really good, a really good food, or maybe you went someplace new that was a lot of fun, and you couldn't wait to tell people about it? Have you ever done that? Maybe when you came to Sunday school, or vacation Bible school, or maybe it was even, so no, you haven't. Oh my gosh, we got to hang out more. <laughs> Stick with me. <laughs> maybe, maybe. We'll talk later. Maybe. You're wise. Anyway, you get so excited about something that you want to tell other people about it. So, um, do you guys know Jesus? You get to know him from different... Do you think Jesus is pretty great? I do. Yeah. Kind of? Really? We'll need to talk. We'll need to talk. I think Jesus is pretty great. And I know that many of you think Jesus is pretty great. And so we want to tell him about, we want to tell people about him, huh? Yeah. So as a way to share good things, 
I want to give each of you a sucker. Mom, hook grabber, can they have suckers or fruit snacks? What does grandma say? Fruit snacks. Okay. Miss Laura, can you grab fruit? She's on it. She's on it. So I'm going to give you a sucker. Okay. And I'm going to give you just that, Creighton. Miss Laura's got one for you. There you go. There you go. I want you to be able to try this and, and see how good it is for yourself, huh? But like we noticed, oops, there we go. Can your sister have, should, should we give your sister fruit snacks? Let's give her fruit snacks. Brielle? Okay, I will come to the back, so if we need to exchange these. Kids, do not open these suckers yet. <laughs> I know. See, that's why we have a children's person. Okay? You can have one of those. We're going to get you three fruit snacks. You get fruit snacks too. But more than just enjoy these treats for yourselves, I want you to be able to share the second one, okay? I'm going to give you another one. She's out of here. She's going to tell people, wait a sec, okay? So I want you to give this second one to somebody and tell them Jesus loves you, okay? Give that one to somebody else. You can have one, and then you tell the people that you get. Go ahead and, yeah, pass that a second. Here you go. You keep one, and then you tell other people Jesus loves you. Okay? Does that work? What do you think of that? Does that work? Okay? But before you go, we're going to pray. You are welcome. Yes, Miss Brielle. Yes. You keep one, and then you give one to somebody else and say Jesus loves you. Okay. There you go. There you go. All right, here we go, fruit snacks. All right, we're going to pray. Okay, so can you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for having us come and see. Help us to tell everyone how much Jesus loves you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can head back to your seat, and you keep one for yourself and pass out that second one and tell them. Oh, thank you, Miss Sophie. Yay. Good, good, good. And you distribute them to other people, too. So now we are blessed uh, at this time to hear a little bit more from Miss Laura. We thought it would be a great opportunity so that you could get to know who it is that's going to be working with your children and amongst us uplifting our intergenerational activities and our family activities. Um, and also, it's very fitting because it's the call of Samuel. What's that? Good. Yeah. Yes, you're good. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you so much for the wonderful welcome I've received. First of all, I wanted to say that is thank you. For the last two weeks, I've met a lot of people and um, everyone has been so gracious and welcoming to me, and I just really appreciate that. And you might have to keep telling me your names for a little bit longer, but I'm working on it and studying the directory, so <laughs> any help. But thank you so much for the warm welcome. It means a lot to me to be welcomed into this community of faith. Um, so I'm still very much learning the ropes, and, um, but I'm excited to get started and to jump into this children and family position. So much that when Pastor Jelena asked if I'd be willing to preach and share my call story, I couldn't really say no. So, if you remember, we are in the season of Epiphany. You guys are good. And as Pastor Jelene introduced last week, our sweet, unforgettable saying for the season is remembering the ABCs. So, as you remember, A is... Uh, this is so good. B is... And C is... They got this down already. It's great. So this is the season where people come to see and realize who Christ is along with themselves and their relationship with God as we are baptized, called, and we're claimed as his. Last week, we read about the baptism of our Lord and took time to remember our own baptism and how we are called and claimed as children of God. Now we're going to start diving into different stories that have to do with call. So when thinking more about call, Pastor Jolene asked if I would share a little bit about my call story with you so you get to know a little bit more about me. 
And so I'm going to share a little bit about myself and then talk a little bit about the Samuel story that you heard read. So when thinking about my call story and journey, I would have to say that I haven't had one moment that defined my call and changed everything in what I was called to do. It has been definitely a gradual process of God working through a variety of different experiences, through many different people, and seeds planted along the way. So to begin, I grew up in Moorhead, Minnesota, down Highway 10, with a wonderful family. Um, a little bit about my family, I have two amazing parents, Dean and Julie, who are a huge piece of instilling my faith. They made church a priority for our family and taught us how important it was to treat and care for those around us. I have two younger brothers, Chad and Adam, and they were wonderful and still are, and we remain very close today. It has definitely been my family who has be began planting those seeds in me and encouraged me as I walked in through my faith journey. They kept me grounded, but also let me make it my own. Growing up, I was a very active youth in school and church. At my home church, I got involved in many different things, such as choirs and youth groups. I had opportunities where I got a chance to go on youth groups of service. I got to experience God creation on houseboat up in North and Rainy Lake. And I got a chance to go on the National Youth Gathering with 32,000 um, of my peers, where I got a chance to learn more about the larger body of Christ and how we're all different but so important to each other. My youth group was another family to, to me where we could talk about life and faith and ask questions, and we worked on making our faith our own. Church was a very comfortable place for me to be and was another home. But looking back, it wasn't necessarily the place, um, but it was the people and the community of faith that I was around that made such an impact on me. It was the relationships that I made with my peers, my Sunday school teachers, and my youth group leaders that invested in us and taught us about God and helped us learn more about ourselves. It was the relationships with people like an elderly man who called me, made the nickname Esmeralda and would yell it across the room whenever I walked in to welcome me. It made me feel a part of something. It was those people and those experiences that planted the importance of a faith community in me and having a relationship with God and others around you. Ever since I was a little girl, I've wanted to be a teacher. Other kids might dream about astronauts or firefighting, but I wanted to teach. I would play school instead of house. My poor brothers would have to be the students over and over for me. Probably wanted to go to school before they even wanted to. But bless their hearts, they were great sports. I always felt like that's what I wanted to do when I grew up. When I was looking at colleges, the education program was always what I was looking at every time. And in the end, I ended up going to Concordia College in Moorhead for education. I loved working with kids and teaching, and so it seemed like a great fit. I do remember, though, my freshman year, after Christmas break, my friend Danica, who I had grown up in my home congregation, called me and said that a church in Fargo was looking for a part-time Christian educator. And she was just letting me know that she had given them my name. I was a little shocked because I wasn't really looking for a job. Um, but sure enough, I met with the pastors over lunch that week and started the next week working for the church. I loved getting to know the kids and help them learn more about their faith. It was a great start for me getting into church work. A couple months down the road, I remember sitting in my dorm room by myself, and I was feeling pretty alone that night and trying to come up with what I was going to do the upcoming summer. I knew I didn't really want to stay in Moorhead and was wrestling, really, if I wanted to be a camp counselor or not. All of a sudden, I had this gut feeling come and told me to call my friend Danica again to talk to her about Pathways as she was a counselor there the previous summer. So I did. I went over to her dorm room and we ended up talking about it and ended up applying that night for a counseling position. And the next week I ended up getting hired. And so that summer I drove out to Camp Emmaus for the beginning of staff training. I was so nervous. Um, so nervous that when I got there early I just drove around the small town of Monaga for a while <laughs> until I came to camp. And from that point on, though, it was really the beginning of a journey for me. That summer, I fell in love with the ministry of camp. The community of faith, it formed week after week, getting to know the kids, helping them know that God loves them so much, and walking alongside them in their life and faith. 
This experience made me question what I was wanting to do with my life, and I wrestled a lot with it before returning to college. One afternoon near the end of summer, I had a conversation with a summer chaplain. He was asking me how my summer was going, and I shared that I was having a lot of thoughts and questions. That was going really well, but it made me question what I had thought I wanted to do all along. I loved the thought of teaching, but I also loved youth and outdoor ministry. It was in that conversation that I was able to explore the gifts I'd been given, what others maybe saw in me, and where I felt God might be calling me next. So when returning to college that semester, I ended up changing my major to religion and youth ministry. I felt that there would be teaching aspects, but felt that like I was called to do that in a different way and different setting. So throughout my four years of college, I continued to work at the church in Fargo. In the summers, I went to work at camp. It was a great setup. Through those experiences, I learned so much about myself, more about who God had created me to be, and more about the things I was passionate about and felt called to do. I was given opportunities to try out my gifts, even when I didn't think I could do them. People put me in those situations to try and had faith in me to do them. During the summer after I graduated from college, I returned to camp, and in the middle of the season, the current program director approached me and shared that she was leaving um, at the end of the summer. And she continued to tell me that she saw gifts in me that she thought would fit a program director's role. That conversation stuck with me and meant a lot as she pointed out gifts that I didn't know I had and maybe even saw my call before I did. Until that point, I wasn't sure where I'd be called to next after graduating, to congregational or outdoor ministry or doing something completely random for a year. I wasn't sure. So I spent a lot of time processing and questioning with my family and friends and in prayer and decided to put my name in for the program director's position. I was blessed enough to receive that spot. And for the past eight years, I felt I was able to live out part of what I was called to do. I got a chance to help others realize their own gifts and how beautifully they are created to tell people that they are loved children of God. I got a chance to teach. I got to try to make this Bible that was written how many years ago alive and relevant today. I got to empower others to be leaders in faith, and I got to connect people together. I was able to see God work in so many different ages and use them in so many different gifts. Last spring, I actually saw that Trinity was needing a children and family coordinator, but I was still working with Pathways, and it just didn't feel like the right timing, but it did catch my eye. And this fall presented a different, um, a chance for new opportunities. And once again, God worked through people in my life when I was least expecting it. And I had gotten a phone call saying, have you thought about this position? Have you seen it? And talked to me about where I was at and gifts and whether this might be a good fit. I'm very thankful for the ways that God has um, continued to use people to give me that nudge that sometimes I need or push. Um, and... I'm very blessed to be here and try to live on my call in a new place, in a new community. Looking back at my call story and journey, there were definitely times in the midst where I questioned my path and I questioned God's call. I wrestled with it and I was confused. I wanted God to put signs as big as the screen telling me what I needed to do next. Um, I sometimes ignored or didn't catch things that he was telling me to do, but he kept putting people or experiences in my path. And I'm thankful now that I can look back and notice how God was continually at work in unexpected ways, experiences, and people. And I think those are some of the reasons why I really resonate with the text today from 1 Samuel. So a little bit of background about what's going on at Samuel. During this time, um, Israel in the past had seen some really strong leaders in Moses and Joshua. And they got to the promised land, and they didn't really have a leader anymore. And different judges were rising up. Um, in difficult times to see it through. But Israel wasn't really an organized nation with administration or an army. And so the next leaders were being looked at and for God to call. So it's kind of this time of turmoil a little bit within the nation of Israel. But the book of Samuel starts out kind of unexpected in a softer way. It starts out with this woman named Hannah. And Hannah's um, really wanting a child. And she's wrestling with that with God and praying to God for a child. And she promises that if she's given a child, that she will give it right back to the Lord. And so 
the Lord blesses Hannah with a child, and this child's name is Samuel, who you heard about in this story. And so as promised, Hannah gives Samuel back, and he goes to the holy place with Eli to study, and he's raised in Shiloh. So in this reading for today, Samuel's a young boy, so he's grown up in this temple and is being taught about how to be a leader and about God's word. And so he's sleeping with the Ark of the Covenant. So you can picture him sleeping in this holy place, like this sanctuary, and Eli is off sleeping in another room. And Samuel awakens to a voice calling him and runs to Eli's room and wakes him up and says, here I am. But Eli says he didn't call and go back to sleep. And this happens three times. Now we as readers know that it's God calling Samuel, but even Eli is confused for a while as to what is happening. Eventually Eli realizes what is going on and tells the boy to speak to the Lord. There are several things to notice in this story about call. One being that, frankly, Samuel is confused when called. It's easy to miss God's call or get confused where it might be coming from. Sometimes it might take us a while to understand what God's call for is for us. And it's a slower realization instead of a huge event that reveals itself to us. People, when talking about call, often share about a period of uncertainty and questioning, like Samuel, as to what they're being called to do. And sometimes it takes others, like Eli, to help us figure out and understand our calls from God. I know this was definitely true in my call story when I look back and see all the different people and conversations that God th worked through to help me hear my call. Maybe you can think of people in your own life that have helped you figure out your call along the way. And frankly, it's really hard to listen. Um, what's easier for you, listening or talking? And that may be different for everyone. But with the world around us, it's hard to listen for God in the midst of all the voices coming at us in our lives, from media and culture and what's the next cool thing, what's the next iPhone you have to have, all these ex expectations coming at us and more. How do we take time away and listen? To not always be telling God what we think should be happening in our lives or what we want or what we need when we pray, but instead to sit and to listen. I think Samuel learns this in the midst of this reading. He quiets himself and he hears God. At the end, when he listens for God, he responds differently. He says, your servant is listening instead of here I am. One of my favorite things about the story is that God calls a youth to lead, which is unexpected, but very typical for God. The Bible is full of people that God calls that are unexpected. He calls the disciples, as you heard about in the gospel reading for today, who are these fishermen and laborers. They're not priests and holy men that you might typically expect. He calls Moses, who's afraid of public speaking, to hey, lead this group of people out of Egypt. He even uses Lazarus, Lazarus who is dead. <laughs> so. The options are endless for God, and he, it should really show that he uses everyone, that there's no limit to age of when he can use you and your call. And sometimes God's call isn't always easy. If you go into reading at the end of the story, you heard that God tells Samuel what's going to happen to Eli's family, and it isn't really happy news. But Samuel has to tell Eli that, the person who raised him and taught him the truth of what God spoke to him, even when it was hard. Have you had situations in your life where you felt called to do something or fight for something, even though it would be the harder road? The good news in all this is that God is with us in our walk and guiding us and giving us strength in our journey and our call. We all have call stories, and this week I encourage you to think about yours. What has been your journey so far? And maybe you're still figuring that out. Who have been people and experiences along the way that have made an impact and I would also encourage you to think about how can we be more like Eli and encourage others in their calls and the gifts you see in them? And how can we be like Samuel and try and listen for God more? Amen.
ask you to please stand as you're able. Before we join in prayer, we do the Apostles' Creed and confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. I ask you to start out with prayer today, listening to God. I know it might be scary, but for maybe 30 seconds, no words. I'm just talking to God, listening. Call to know, love, and follow you, O oh God. We pray today for the church, the world, and all in need. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to listen to you, to hear your voice, and to answer your call. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Restore and strengthen world leaders. Restore and strengthen the leaders of our church. Give us a clear vision of your power to move hearts and minds and enable us to act with justice and compassion. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Fill our congregation with a renewed zeal to love our neighbor as you love us. Open our mouths to invite friends and neighbors to come and see you. Let us listen to you as you call us in service and direct our lives. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Refresh the depressed, the despairing. Comfort those who weep and mourn. Give companionship to the lonely and healing to the sick. Lord, today we especially bring before you members of our congregation, the family and friends of Margaret Mayfield, Candy, Sue Sonnenberg, Matt Meyer, Evie Sutter, Michaela Morris, Beth McCauley, Deb Newman, Diane Paisley, Eric Hansen. Comfort, give companionship, and give healing. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. We pray also for Paulette Hansen, Eric Hansen, and Paul Sandman for comfort, hope, and healing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share that gift of peace with one another. It's okay. <laughs> God's peace. Yeah. That's okay. And I'm just going to tell him that the teachers can come forward for communion. You may be seated, and we will now receive our offering. Recognizing the time, teachers, if you would like to come forward to receive communion first, you're welcome to do so. But it's worship, and this truly is the most important thing that any of us can do today or this week. So don't be anxious. The coffee will keep. There will be plenty of donuts. For now, we will receive our offering. <coughs>
in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together now as we've been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. God's people called to grow in faith and action. Well, 